So um, I'm going to talk to you about the research in particle physics. What does it mean? Uh, it is uh, trying to understand what are the basic building blocks of universe and uh, how, what is elementary today. Of course, what is elementary depends when you ask this question. 100 years ago, the atoms were elementary. We then discovered that atoms have nuclei and then there are protons and neutrons in some of them, in, inside those. And then very, some 40 years ago, we discovered that inside those, there are even smaller objects, very heavy, called quarks. Now, we don't know if there is anything smaller than that. We also um, connect the smallest with the largest. This is the history of the universe, starting from the Big Bang and going through the creation of atoms, eventually stars, galaxies, and us. And, uh, we're trying to recreate and understand the very early stages, uh, some fraction of a second after the Big Bang. Now, we use, uh, we're looking for objects which are very heavy, and you all know this equation. So we need very high energy to recreate, to come as close to the uh, uh, Big Bang as possible. In this course of uh, this study over the last 40 years, we found a new periodic table of what is fundamental today. Uh, we have those quarks, uh, which is in the left column, we call them up and down, an electron, which makes all the matter that you, me, and this podium is made of. But we found also there are two other families, the vertical columns in the middle and on the right, of objects which are also quarks and, and cousins of electrons and neutrinos, which are very heavy, and live for a very, very short time, but given enough energy, they are produced and they are there. Then they decay down to uh, this regular matter. We also have quanta of the forces that understand that, uh, in how they interact with each other. The photon, uh, which uh, interacts with the charges, the glue, which keeps the quarks together in the proton, and the carriers of the force, which are responsible for radioactive decays and for the sun shining. We also have a theory, which is mathematically complete and very elegant. And uh, whenever we test it, we see it works with incredible precision. I mean, the, to give you a feeling what the precision is, it's like measuring the distance from New York to Los Angeles to the thickness of the human hair making the cal theoretical calculations, comparing the two, and they match. So we believe that we have a fairly nice picture of what we call a standard model. However, it has some very embarrassing feature, and that is that it ex predicts that all those particles have no mass, which is clearly inconsistent with observation. <laughs> um, so the theorists came to the rescue and predicted the existence of a new particle, which we call the Higgs boson, which in, creates a field in which everything moves through it and slows down. And the slowing down is equivalent to acquiring the mass. Now, we do it with uh, large accelerators. Uh, the, the one which I worked on, uh, the group from SMU, is uh, the uh, Large Hadron Collider at the border of France and Switzerland near Geneva. It's uh, 16 miles around and accelerates particles, protons to very high energy. And then uh, we smash them together. And when we smash them together, all sorts of fragments come out. And given enough energy, the, the objects occasionally, rare objects, can, massive objects can be produced. Now, in order to measure those objects and trying to figure out if there is something new that we haven't seen before, we had to build a detector. And uh, this is a map of uh, countries which are involved in the ATLAS collaboration, about 3,000 scientists, about 1,000 graduate students from all over the world. And uh, we built a detector which is quite uh, large. It's a foot footprint of a half of the football field, eight story high, and it's full of sensors. You can't really... Um, make a photograph when it's completed. So this is the early installation, and you can see down on the bottom the engineer is standing three story above the ground level, and then you fill it up with the detectors. So uh, this actually measures what happens in the collision, what comes out of it, all those fragments. 
that come out. And those fragments are really messy. I mean, this is a picture. And in the top part, you can see that it produces zillion of tracks, uh, which you have to reconstruct. And sometimes we make, can make a mistake. Uh, and the nature can also fool us, fools us. So uh, whenever we're trying to figure out something, we have to understand whether what we see is <laughs> not an accidental uh, um, combinations of things which we um, uh, come from the known physics. We're looking for something new, but we have to account for the, the combinatorics of, of accidental correlations. Now, this is the only picture which I uh, want to show you. Well, on the slide, was I want to show you with the tec uh, technical data. We eventually, this July, two months ago, we have found a little bump. And this little bump sits on an enormous amount of background, which comes from various uh, accidents. Now, this technical picture on the right tells, uh, is a measure of, do we really understand what we see? What happens if the nature tries to fool us? What's the probability that we don't see things, new ones, but just accidental combinatorics? And the little bump, the very deep bump on the left end tells us, if you see the scale 10 to minus 9, it's one post time in a billion probability that nature would fool us. So we think we got it. Uh, <laughs> we have it. So uh, this Higgs boson is a, is a discovery which uh, we announced in July. It's published. And it changed our periodic table of today. We now have quarks and the cousins of electrons and neutrinos. And we have carriers of the force. And they all move through this mist generated by the Higgs boson, which gives them the mass. So uh, is it done and over with? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, there is a lot of more questions that we have that do not have proper answer. And they really uh, are is a challenge for the next uh, generation of scientists in the 21st century. The, I just listed the three object, uh, obvious ones, uh, which I consider one of the most intriguing. The stars in the galaxies rotate faster than expected. Uh, they don't, uh, galaxies don't fall apart. And why? And simple explanation which is proposed is that there is additional matter which we don't see so far. It's called a dark matter because it doesn't shine. And perhaps we can see it in accelerators. Again, all of those objects, although they can create galaxies uh, by themselves, are not seen by us. We don't feel them very well. Then the gravity is so much weaker than anything else that we deal with, and we don't understand why. Uh, the popular explanation today is that maybe gravity acts through other dimensions. We just move on a surface of three dimensions, but there are other dimensions through which gravity acts. Perhaps uh, that's, again, if it's true, that should leave some signatures in the experiment that we're making. And finally, the most intriguing and the recent one is that uh, the sky survey of supernovas, which essentially tell us that universe is expanding, so all the galaxies and are moving away from us. Uh, but as the expansion is accelerating. And quite frankly, nobody has a clue where it's coming from. Uh, it's, it gets a name of dark energy. Uh, but uh, what is it? It's a challenge for the future. So I, I would want to, well, this is a picture of which we have of expanding universe. I mean, that's like a surface of balloon. And we essentially, all the, in every direction or from every point on, in, in universe, the space is expanding. But uh, what I want to end up with is a statement that what we really understand, we have this very elegant now standard model. We found the Higgs boson. We understand the top 5% of the matter which we are made of, this thing here. And I think we understand it pretty well. But the universe has another 25% of the dark matter and maybe 70% of dark energy. And it's up to the future to figure it out.